Why does the public always get caught up in a mania? There's so many in recorded history, and yet uh, here we are in 2023, and we have multiple bubbles around the world. I, I find this fascinating, and it explains a lot, even my own experience. I'm not saying that uh, I wasn't immune to it until I became aware of it. <clears throat> I mean, a lot of people, I think, know my story where in uh, 1989, I bought real estate right at the top, February 1989. I was engaged and recently engaged and thought that, again, um, we're hardwired this way, right? The, the real estate was going to continue to go higher. And the same year I started in the investment business. So I had a quick lesson in understanding uh, social mood. Like, you know, I'll tell you one thing. There's a lot of people in the investment business, financial advisors, mutual fund, hedge fund managers, um, people that work indirectly, uh, private wealth. But unless you work with the public, and I did that for 23 years, you really will never understand how emotional their decisions are about investments. I mean, even if they are wealthy, you know, people, there's this assumption by society, if they're wealthy, they're smart. No, they just uh, were driven to become wealthy and successful. Doesn't mean that they are uh, understanding of uh, macroeconomics or, so, or social mood. Anyways, there is a lot of uh, fields of finance and um, I was an early student of Marx. I know it surprises you, right? But uh, you got to remember that, uh, well, you have to understand, I should say, that uh, I'm an immigrant son. And uh, they, when they came to Canada, they worked in factories and they worked really hard, slaved away. My concern was them, you know, which political party was serving them. I mean, when I was young and ignorant, didn't understand. And so Marx's uh, philosophy made sense, where governments were to dictate the future and have a command economy. And when I started the invest business, 89, somebody's articulated, you know, you're really Marx. Uh, have you heard of Schumpeter? I said, who? The Schumpeter, he's the opposite side of Marx. And, um, you should read him. And um, that changed everything. And so I've I've done this 180 about central planning. I mean, we're seeing the it, it just the the mistakes, let's say, of trying to central plan and stop a cycle from unfolding, right? And central banks with their money printing. I don't even know why they do this. But what I'm trying to get at is basically is that it's the the markets dictate. When I, and I when I say the markets, we're talking about the public. That's you. And everybody you know who are making a decision with their capital what to do. But I highly recommend this book. It's just a fantastic book because if you go through along the spectrum of uh, uh, socialism, communism, Marxism, uh, capitalism, all these isms, creditism, new word, that's actually the world we're living in because no, we, we, it's no more capitalism. We're saving investment, it's consumption and exponential rise in credit which that's coming to an end. And socioeconomics, I, I think this is why most people miss the bigger picture, is that when you come to understand the public, and when I read this, personally, everything made sense. When I started to read, it, read Elliott Waves and their theories and what they do, I don't use specifically the timing because I'm not, but I do read the research only because it has a fascinating perspective. I mean, we had, I'll give you an example, um, a great call they made. A lot of people have alluded to, you know, during 2008 and it was peak everything and commodity prices were going to go up forever. And Elliott Waves, simply on their social cycle uh, thesis, uh, predicted a collapse in commodity and oil prices only because that was the prevailing think, right? Uh, the, the problem with you and I is that we can't see cycles, business cycles, long waves, uh, the Kuznets cycle, real estate. We just extrapolate the current trend. And I want to read something to you while you're looking at this book, because I, I highly recommend it if you're in the investment business. You'd be crazy if you didn't read the book. 
but uh, according to what I've read here about uh, forecasting, now, according to the most recent brain imaging research, the neural networks that we use to envision the future, right? When we think about something about the future, our future is really shaped by memories, movies, and so forth, right? So think of Star Trek and how that got us to view the future dramatically different. And a lot of technologies came from that. So really, what, what they're saying is that means that most of what we can only imagine, we already know. And since prediction is the brain's primary function and intelligence fi uh, foundation, this biological efficiency can be seriously limited. Here's why. Our neural network wants what they want to see, in, which is certainty, and that is the benefit of wiring. I think this is evolutionary. So it helps us feel prepared for the future, being controlled and confident. But the problem is, is that our thinking is that we extrapolate the current trend, right? We don't see the cycle. So we take what is current and then extrapolate that into the future. And this is why most people miss a business cycle. And, and those of us, once we fell into the thesis, we look at the data, we see the cycle. And once you understand the concept of energy, then the cycles make sense, right? Because nothing moves without uh, a sound wave, so to speak, if you looked at that aspect. There's another great book. By the way, every single financial or any financial advisor you're dealing with or a mutual fund manager, anybody who manages your capital, if they don't have this book on their desk, this is the eighth version. I have uh, probably two hard copies and a digital one, so I can reference to it. And it's, it's a phenomenal book. I mean, when I read this book, it was an epiphany, an insight, a wisdom into the greatest books of history. And it's we're just repeating these things over and over again. And and it has the ingredients of what, what's happening. And yet people want to deny that we have a massive bubble in real estate, which is global in the developed world. We have now a massive bubble in bonds uh, gov and governments. They're just not sustainable, right? Um, and it's uh, various stock markets. And unfortunately, they're going to unwind. But you, you, you wonder, with this massive, fantastic thing called the internet, we would learn from history. I, I'm even surprised that I'm getting challenged on this theory, on this model. But all it is is taking history, putting it all together. Oh, by the way, I'm going to artificially enhance AI enhance the long wave because I have all these models and it's 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 mechanical just following what I've recorded and taking notes and put it together and uh, just reminding me looking at the cycles right and I've done this for so long so it's automatic but I'll be able to enter it and then it could just tell me actually what's un, un, unwinding or unfolding so to speak what I'm trying to get at is that it's it's a surprise that anybody would question this. And when I try to direct people to books to back it up, not just it's not my thinking or how I want the economy to uh, occur, right? The, the long wave and this forecasting that I've got into, simply how the economy works, not how somebody wants it to work, right? And we're seeing that attempt. Anyways, look at this chart here. This is fascinating. Here is, uh, I've got... Uh, Three charts of, of of bubbles, and you can see the sources, uh, numerous books, and websites that I've, I've taken the information. I mean, look at the average fall here: almost ninety percent. The internet, Amazon, um, South Sea bubble, uh, Greece, the Chicago real estate bubble, the ja Japanese uh, land bubble. Recently, when we had the um, Real estate bubbles in the U.S., the Dow Jones bubbles, uh, tulip mania. I mean, I only brought up this one. I didn't want to show you all of them. And ones I'm adding, I mean, look at the bubble we had last year, renewable energy down 80% or ARK Investments, uh, you know, ETF. That's investing in all the new technologies. Again, it's an asset bubble. Yet, we are repeating. We don't think them through. What I'm trying to make the point is, is that there is an aspect I think people, the majority of investors, don't understand. You're extrapolating the trend. And um, if you haven't studied the long wave or 
seculum cycle, the fourth turning, or manias, panics, and cra uh, uh, crashes, socioeconomic theory of finance, elite wave. These are all seeing the world from a cyclical perspective because that's how energy moves through a medium, right? Does that make sense, right? And if you look at where there's no economic progress, um, you just think of uh, Cuba, except for their music, right? Where they're they're free to create. So create, creativity is is creative destruction. It is always renewed. We crash, we burn, right? I the long wave is not a, a permanent bear market. Yes, we're going to go through economic winter for the next probably sixteen years, and it's going to be challenging. But Peter and Kondratov never said. And, and remember why Kondratov was actually was uh, jailed and then later killed because he said it would collapse to Stalin's delight, but it would come back stronger than ever. And for that, he was killed. And this is the reason why that my website has his picture and acknowledges his work. Here's a man who discovered evolutionary economics because that's what the long wave is. We we acknowledge. And we realize that uh, collapse is necessary to purge the greed, inefficiency, unproductivity, and force the economy to grow where it's efficient. And by the way, that world's decentralized, and we've talked about that. Um, anyways, as always, uh, questions, people are articulating their points. I appreciate it all. I'm answering them as quickly as I can, unless it's specific, right? Uh, about the, what the models are. But, uh, you know, if you're curious, you have a different view, that's okay. I'm not here. I'm here to show what I believe is one of the best forecasting models in the world. That's what I developed. Not because I wanted to, only because when you're wiped out financially, by the way, that's given me a competitive advantage. You want to know why? Well, I did. And I just happened to work in the investment business, and then I came to understand, oh, my God, I wish I knew what I knew now. It wouldn't have happened. But would I be in the position I am today? Does that make sense? I don't think so. I think adversity makes you strong. Now, a lot of people are asking about the um, place to access the model. You, you can access the model. Uh, the Substack account, the Economic Long Wave Substack, okay? And there's an update actually today about M2, an important one. And what the model does, it's very simple. Uh, I When I was studying the Long Wave, I discovered uh, uh, Martin Pring's work, who is, uh, I think, one of the godfathers of technical analysis. He has, you know what, though, let me grab it here, all right? There you go. Well, oh, sorry about the noise, but does that come through? Let me, there you go. I'm getting a reflection there, right? That, that book there, um, and I have a digital format of it, is really, I, I just took that information and other things. There's other things. There are other inputs. But really, that book has a long wave model. So it made sense. Okay, let me make a Canadian version. And I did. And the the results speak for itself with my clients and now i'm offering that to anybody so if that appeals to you it's not a trading model it's not you know what the market does today or tomorrow there's a lot of people doing the doing those services so what the model simply does is participate with the bull market buffett does it a different way you know, you can see he's bearish by holding an enormous amount of cash it's the same thing right the the models hold a lot of cash as you're well aware, which I'm giving away for free, it's extremely bearish on real estate only because we have a secular rise in interest rates. We don't have Canadians, Americans, Europeans, uh, Australians, New Zealanders, all don't have the income to support asset prices. So with rising interest rates, it's going to force the price of real estate lower. And pretty much that's it for a long time in real estate appreciation. Okay. So again, that's where you can access the model. And if you like this, uh, please, you know, let me know, leave a comment, uh, a question. I'm an avid reader. I have, you can't see here, but I have, I'm working in this new office here. I'm just finishing up there, right? I have hundreds of books and I'm probably 30 books behind if there's something interesting uh, or current. And there's a lot of books I recommend. And it's on the website too, right? If you want access to the uh 
what I'm reading and you want to get a little bit of a groundwork of the long wave theory, right? The cycle, then you, you can read there, you know, start with his book and uh, then go from there and business cycles and then all the work it's gone. On. I'm just adding to that body of knowledge, right? Because now we have so much more information why his thesis is correct. And it's the only model that recognizes that Capitalism is an evolutionary system that destroys the old order, the old system. Out of that collapse, we create a new. So when people say capitalism is collapsing, they're totally wrong. They, they, well, let me say that they misunderstand capitalism. Yes, capitalism collapses, creative destruction, right? We're going to be destroying the education and healthcare system, the political system, the monetary system. It doesn't work anymore. There's better alternatives coming along the way, but there's vested interests that are hanging on. And again, that makes sense. So that's why during the fourth turning or economic winter, you see rising civil unrest. You see world wars because the shift of power. And that shift of power is necessary because we can't continue with the system we have with overinflated asset prices where it's almost impossible for anybody under 30 to purchase a home. Mathematically impossible. This is not the Canada my parents immigrated to and had phenomenal ability to become successful by hard work and saving and purchase a home. It's, it's so financialized that that's what's coming to an end. Anyways, that's gone a good length. And as always, Talk to you soon.